two ton exactly in this bucket. It is a private red. At least it's been damaged once before. Because the power cut with a proper lump in it. On a Merlot, it's not even properly daylight yet. It's not even eight o'clock actually. We've got a wagon here for biomass, and then we've got another wagon here for Bill's wheat, and then we've got another wagon due any time for some oil seed rain. So all due just before eight o'clock. Dad's just loading the wood chip up now. I'm gonna get rid of this wheat wagon. Just need to find the, the bucket, the, the grain bucket, because he's obviously got the wood chip bucket on, I need the grain bucket, which is the clean one. And here's T&J for the rape. So we've got a rape wagon, a wood chip wagon, and then we've obviously got the wheat wagon here as well. Apparently the bucket is in this shed as well. Got about 20 ton on now. Sky keeps getting better. Now I've got a 71 plate TNJ wagon here. He's come for oil seed rape. I don't normally see a number plate with TNJ wagon, they're normally all private plates. I've reset my counter. Two ton exactly in this bucket. Off we go. Driver's there polishing his nuts. Well, his wheel nuts. It squeaks a bit, doesn't it? Need to get a bit of oil in there. It is a private register, Mondo, as in Simon Mondo. Three days old. Guess how much one is? That's saying on the top. Yeah, today's quiz question how much is a new scan? You're 450. 540. Don't know whether you can see. We've got snow. Frank's just tidying up here. Our gateway is really dangerous for getting in and out of. And there's a gateway over there in the field. You can't see it because the hedge is the side. And we used to come in and out this way sometimes when this was a pasture. Anyway, we've not used it for years, but we're gonna stone it up more level so it's not got this big hump. And then start using it again for tractors going out because our gateway, you can't see to the right very well. And then to the left, they come flying down the hill. Anyway, there's a bit of a little bush here, so Frank just moved it over there slightly as well, just to make it a bit wider coming through this gap. And we're gonna try and strip, this, strip the mushy bit off the top and put some stone down and get like a ramp here better. But it's starting snowing and raining now. This is the door. We got punched by the Merlot in the summer and we sort of straightened to get it to shut. We're gonna get a new door for it, but I need a handle for Brookhouse for the barn that we've built, but the handle's the wrong way around. So we're going to unscrew it now and see if we can flip the handles over from being left hand to right hand or vice versa. Yeah, luckily, if you look there, there's a circlip. So we can take it apart and flip the handle so it goes the other way. So it'll face this way instead of that way. Yeah, we put this back together now. The handle can be swapped, so that's good. So we'll take the handle off this bent door, get a new door, and it'll come with a handle and put it on. Because they're a bit different to a normal door where you can get in like B&Q and screw fix, but they're really good fire doors as well. So we'll swap that round when it arrives next week, hopefully. It's cold, it's wet, it's miserable, it's freezing, and I'm trying to find somewhere with good phone signal that's, that's, that's warm and not windy to record something for Radio 4, which will be on at quarter past five tonight. But to be honest, this you're seeing this video after quarter past five, so if you heard me, it was me. Someone might have seen this on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter last night. Anyway, it's a Bateman that has to sort of narrowly avoid a car that's stopped and a cyclist got in the car's way and the Bateman had to drive on a hedge and tips over. So it's a quick video of it. It's not very really good quality, but it just shows you, you know, these slow moving cyclists causing accidents all over the country. Sign for them. Uh, date of birth. Oh, yeah, it's a sign for these because yeah. the knives and forks. Look at that. Gold knives and forks. Oh, eh? Spoiling no. you lot. And then we've got rainbow ones as well, hopefully. Oh, yeah, Look at that. Oh, mm. Are you on toast? Beans on toast. Oh, right. I got so Frank scraped the slop off here. It's mainly topsoil. But unfortunately, the electric cable is less than a foot 
under the ground. It's a bit hard to see on the camera. Now that electric cable comes all the way across from over there and we, it cost us 70,000 quid to have it put in six years ago. And we had to dig the trench, but we didn't do the ends because we weren't allowed to work near the infrastructure. So all over there, it's three, four foot deep because we had to put it in. The last bit that the, the, the electric board did with their mini digger near their pole and near the substation, it's not even a foot deep and we've caught it. It's got no sand on it and no tape on it. Whereas we have to buy sand to put on that and tape it. So I'm a bit pissed off because the electric's now off and we did our job properly and they didn't and they got paid. There's Sam with a load of Christmas trees and a load of car keys at the bottom. So Steve has buried his car keys in the load of Christmas. Obviously by mistake. So Sam's going to tip the Christmas trees out and he's going to try and find his car keys. Because of the power cut, we've got to open the roller shutter doors manually. So Sam's using the Merlot now to tip the trailer out and we're going to try and find Steve's car keys. You have a big cuddly toy on your keys and then you'd see it easy. <laughs> Smells nice anyway. Well, you, you don't need a magic tree air fresher in your car. just been at Brookhouse, which is what we used to call a new farm, but I think I've owned it nearly three years now. Anyway, I've been with a planning consultant looking at what we can do with the rest of the building so that they can earn more of their keep. So Olivia Starkey, if anyone knows, it has just been here. I think a kid's watched the video and I forgot to give him a calendar, but I'll give her a calendar next time I see her. So sorry about that. Anyway, I'm going to shoot back now because apparently the electric cable that is that we've hit actually isn't SP Energy's one. It's our one going to the solar panels that we couldn't put deep because their cable was underneath our cable. So that is why we've hit it and it's just actually tripped it off. So hopefully they'll have the electric back on by the time I get back. But I've been fuming all afternoon thinking it was them. So we've basically disconnected the solar panel wire and now we have got the electric back on for the yard. But the solar panel wire also is the same wire that powers the biomass boiler. So we've now got electric with no heating. So we just need to go and see now whether it's just the earth, the cable that's damaged, which we can repair quite quickly, or we've got to rejoint the main big cable. It's like that thick. So what's happened is the digger has took a bit of that wire. It stabbed it through into the copper core inside there and tripped it off, but it's not actually broken the, the, the rest of the wire. So we can put some resin, a resin joint hopefully on this without having to cut it and put a big joint in. But for now we can seal it up properly with some silicon. So it's seal it up temporary overnight with some silicon so that no moisture gets in. We're just looking at this now and it's actually got tape on here and tape to there. So it's obviously been damaged this cable when it was put in, which I can't remember. But, and then it's been wrapped with tape. And you won't believe it that we've actually caught it in exactly the same place. It's been damaged once before. We're back in business. We've got the boiler back on anyway. So we'll be warm tonight as well as having power. I wanted to show you how dangerous the gateway was. For some of these tractors with big bonnets especially something like the 49.55 because the bonnets i don't know what one two eight or ten foot from where you sat maybe 12 foot anyway we'll do that tomorrow because obviously i've been messing with the electrics today but now they're back on the boiler's back on um a bit random really the cable obviously had some sort of damage on the outer casing and then the digger caught it in exactly the same place and just pushed one of the armor shielding which is good because that's what protects you into the live and it tripped the electrics off but we thought we'd dug into the main incoming supply so we were concerned obviously Scottish power pretty quick to come out took about an hour or so and they're like no it's not our cable ours is all fine so like, oh but i realize now the reason is we had to go over the top of their cable with one of our feeds so it's probably not quite as deep as it should be but at least it was protected and it wasn't a high voltage cable and just tapping it with the digger was enough to trip it off and everyone was safe Chester's drinking some water in the background, making a noise. Anyway, I've just been thinking about this cable. I actually think we put our cable in first because we were waiting for them. So they must have then had to go underneath our cable. And maybe when they backfilled it, they got it wrong. Anyway, I don't know. But for some, and I could have damaged it and that's why I had tape on. I don't know. But we'll get it fixed tomorrow properly. All in a day's work, eh? So the birthday bumper tonight is going to be the outro because it's completely dark and I've not been anywhere near the Bateman today. Stating me here because I've had a hat on all day. Oh yeah, good news as well. Steve managed to find his keys once we tipped all the Christmas trees out and moved them one by one. He managed to get his keys out the bottom of the pile. So that was a result as well. And it stopped raining as well.
Oh yeah, I forgot to say, if you heard me on Radio 4, I know I sat in the fast track and recorded it where it was somewhere quiet and warm. Well, they then rang me back up and said, can you do it somewhere so it sounds like you're on a farm? So I had to re-record it again, stood in the field, just so it sounded more authentic. Because obviously with a radio, you're only getting the sound, you're not getting any visual. So they wanted the background noise of the motorway or a digger working or the chipper or the merlots or whatever, and a bit of wind. So I had to go outside and re-record it for them. Anyway, lots of people have messed me, said they'd heard it. Also, lots of people send me pictures of the calendars on the walls and where they're putting them. So uh, if you're doing that, send it on Instagram. Just got the beast out the shed because sadly it is going back to class. They were not that generous. They never gave it me for Christmas. But they kind of did give it me for Christmas because they brought it in December and they're taking it back in January. So I had it for Christmas. So technically it was right. But yeah, they uh, obviously they either sold it or they need it for doing more demonstrations. So someone else can have a good play on it. I was hoping it might have still been here for the open day that we're having in, in, a, in about a week's time. But unfortunately they need it. So it's a wagon on its way. That's a proper trailer, that. I think it's 60, I'd say it was 60 foot long. But well, it must be 60 foot with a unit. Class MOT. Steering axles as well. It's quite manoeuvrable, that. Is that hydraulic? Yeah, yeah. Sad times. Check the weight block, something to catch. Hopefully the front wheels will start putting up the ramp. So that it doesn't hit the trailer there. Easy. A proper lump in it. Anyway, thanks to everyone that's been watching today. Hopefully tomorrow we have a bit more of a productive day and I'll see you then.